everything in the artistic process starts the same way. You have an, you having an idea. Uh, these ideas come may come at random and be spontaneous. Uh, or maybe it may be a very specific one so you have thought of it for a very very long time and was just looking for inspiration to actually start it um, you can get inspired by literally anything and everything from like looking out of the window and seeing a flower or a person walking to going through the book and reading something from it. Um, however, here and now, let's uh, focus on the finding the idea for the practice of the concept art. Uh, so we we will be looking for the ideas. We will be looking for something to inspire us. These ideas can be found in everything. And the easiest thing is to go on Pinterest and type in concept art or illustration um, and looking at what you like, what you like to see, what you like looking at. Like it could be the environment, it could be character design, it could be product design, it could be literally anything that you like in particular. Uh, well, I'll be looking at environments. Um, another good thing to look at is ArtStation, uh, it's an amazing website that where you can find the inspiration and see professional pieces from the actual artists. To find inspiration, it's, it's a hard job to do and you need to focus on something that you love doing and seeing. So sometimes it can be a specific artist, so like Let's, let, let's take Loish. It can be Loish or something of a particular style, a particular environment, so like forests, oceans, something that you're very, very passionate about. And that's the easiest way to find the information or the inspiration. Don't worry about plagiarizing something from something or someone you see. And don't be afraid to draw that piece that already exists because first of all it's just gonna stay in your book. Second of all, probably nobody's gonna see it anyway and uh, you will learn something from it and it will give you some ideas. Another very good way to get inspired is to go through the books with illustrations, the one that you have at home for example, or the comic books if you're in if you love comic books and get ideas from there film books so like i don't know the art of disney the art of dreamworks the art of how to train your dragon and those kind of books if you have them it will give you the ideas if you, but if you look too too long for the inspiration it will start to kind of get into you and you will start doubting yourself so just do a quick flip through uh, glance through just something that catches your eye and then take that as an inspiration for something that you want to do and don't think too much about something else that can potentially stop you from doing the idea just get the pencil and we'll get drawing Choosing and doing thumbnails. Choosing a theme, theme can always be tricky because you can like a few different ideas, a few different things um, at the same time. In this case, just sketching and doing thumbnails will help you decide on what you like in particular or what works best. While you're browsing through Pinterest, ArtStation, or flipping through a book, uh, try doing small sketches on the piece of paper, or in the sketchbook, or whatever is next to you, and uh, see how it goes. Try, don't be, don't be afraid to copy someone's work, because it can spike the imagination in you, and you can find something interesting, even though you may think that's 
halfway dressing. Don't don't be afraid. Uh, these sketches must be kept rough and quick. You can add a bit of shading if you want for the depth of the drawing, but they're not necessary if you don't want to. You can do them in anything, in pen, pencil, colored pencil, crayons, I don't know, whatever is next to you. They are just there to guide you and are basically like a brain dump for your ideas. Don't go into details in these thumbnails. You and make make them very quick under let's say under three minutes. Thumbnailing process is essential and you should push through it. Doing many thumbnails even through even though you may feel like it's not working out as you want it. Pushing through it through them is very important because you may miss an interesting concept that you can potentially like more than what you have drawn through. It's always that kind of thing when you're, you're drawing, you're doing, you're doing thumbnails and you feel like, oh, it's not going anywhere. I just, I might as well just stop. Um, this is the point where you have to pick up the pencil, have to look for something and start drawing. Sometimes it's when you run out of your own ideas. So just mindlessly take somebody else's idea and just sketch it out. It just, yeah, just sketch it out, sketch it on the piece of paper very roughly so that you can like get the feel of the lines or draw something that you're very very comfortable with to get the imagination flowing. The thumbnailing process also gives you the advantage of having multiple storylines and in case one fails you always have another one just just right next to it. So it's just about having, let's call it plan B, in case something doesn't work out. Uh, remember, these sketches must not look good or appealing and not, and may not even, like, not every single person should understand what's on them. As long as you got the idea down, as long as you understand what's, what you have drawn, and as long as he had pushed you or inspired you or you have gotten a more clear idea of what's going on, then we're good to go. So like in my process, I started by just having a general lines uh, put on the paper for guidance. I drew out a few sketches that I didn't particularly like, although I thought I liked those concepts, but when it came to actually drawing them, it turns out mm, not so much. That's why it's important to have a lot of thumbnails and pushing through the process. Uh, one of those sketches was actually the sketch for like my first concept art piece that I'm, uh, but I didn't feel like I wanted to redraw it so or draw it from another perspective, so I kind of moved on. Here's a tip: uh, never draw something thing that you think you'll like don't force your hand uh, if it does if it doesn't feel right from the start don't do it it's about you trusting your gut so at, at some point I had no clue of what I wanted to draw so I um, browsed through Pinterest dropping down a few sketches until I found something interesting. I gotta say I did copy the rough concept but this is the example of where somebody else's concept gets inspires somebody else to draw a different concept even though it's in, everything is inspired on something so technically everything is kind of plagiarized from someone else it's just your own perspective given to the, to the similar piece so this concept had pushed me to alter it and make it my own by adding a few details by changing um, the layout by changing some of the things. After having, after doing the small thumbnails, I did a bigger one in more in depth and more clean for the guidance. As because I wanted to to do it digitally, I opened Photoshop, the main drawing program that I use. Uh, but you can use other pro programs if you want. In Photoshop, I made the workspace of A4 and filled it with a brownish color. It's always advised to draw on like a 50% gray or any other color of like 50% so that it's not very dark it's not it's not dark it's not white because then you will have a better perspective a better feel towards 
both the whites and the darks and uh, it'll look better and you will feel easier to draw on a 50% gray for example than on just plain white it's also easy on the eyes I made two more free sketches of the same concept but from diff different compositions so like different points of view and I like the first one more so it's time to put it a full page After choosing the concept, composition and drawing it out big, you need to think of the colors that you will use. These colors may depend on the preset color scheme that was chosen for you at random, uh, or it can be inspired by fantasy world where everything is the wrong color, or they can be realistic or portray a certain mood or environment. Choose one main color which will fill most of the space, like brownish orange. Using different shades and values of this color, you can fill the whole page and make it more, give it a bit, a bit more volume, so that you see what's actually happening in the in the piece. Roughly filling the the page so that you have an idea of what is happening and where the light is coming from and where the shade is. After having blocked colors down you can also put down the accent colors so in my case it's the re the reddish color the very bright color of the sunset you should never go overboard with these colors because if there are too many of them and too much too too many colors are used the eye gets lost and the piece looks out of sync. It also starts to look a little bit muddy at some point and not as appealing as if you had one main color and then accents of let's call like different reds in it. You can use more than more than two colors obviously. There's like different combinations for that, but let's just stick to two. Don't get discouraged by how the piece may look now because you have only started the process of putting the colors down. If you want to experiment, try using different brushes and different textures. You can download brushes for free or buy them if you want a specific the specific brushes of a specific artist. They're extremely easy to find online and you can also create the brushes yourself. It's also very easy to do. So let's let's talk shortcuts. It is now the moment where you would want to work on the piece continuously without having to look and move your pen out of the place that you're drawing on. Um, and for example to find a specific color. I will give you a few shortcuts for some of the main aspects when using the brush tool. So if you are on the Mac, holding Ctrl Alt and moving the mouse from left to right will alter the brush size. Holding the same keys and moving the tool up and down will alter the brush's edge hardness. And in some cases, if the brushes are bought, it will just alter the opacity of the brush. Holding Ctrl Alt Command will give you the colors square for some reason. I don't know why it's a square. Where you can pick new colors and and in truth, I find it a little bit difficult to use, but it is helpful to know and it does help sometimes. To quickly sample the color, hold the Alt key. If you want to change the color of the layer, make it make it darker, lighter, more or less saturated, press Command U and this will give you a box with sliders where you can play around and figure out what best suits your drawing. Command T will transform, will free transform the project, the object so you can enlarge, enlarge it or make it smaller. Unfortunately this shortcut doesn't allow you to, doesn't allow you more than the basics so if you want to alter it further you need to go Go to edit and then look for transform and then it will have different versions of the trans of like what you can do with the transform uh, then there is the standard shortcut so which is a command z for undo command s for save b for brush tool and that's actually quite important because sometimes you miss a key and press it's usually x or z and it will give you the wrong tool so if you just press b it will return it back to the brush these shortcuts i find them extremely useful and extremely easy and quickly to use especially when you're working continuously on something so yeah it, it will take some time to get used to these shortcuts but they are definitely the ones that I use the most and the ones that make 
my drawing life so much easier. The project has now gained color and value. The most essential part is behind and now is just a matter of finishing and bringing the project to the extent that you want to see it at. Using different modes and the, on the layers panel, uh, you can make interesting effects with the layers on top and above. This can add to your drawing, but it, they will always, de it will depend on what you like, so just play around with them. I was also advised to have textures on the drawings and you can download them from the internet and place, adjust and transform them the way you like and use the layering process and that's when the layering process comes in. Play around with different adjustments, layers under the normal on the layer panel in Photoshop. Uh, it will have like multiply, hard light, all of that. So just play around with it and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, don't forget that you can also alter the opacity on the layers itself so that some things may be not as bright and will be see-through if you want that effect. You will, it can add to the picture and it's just a very useful thing that everybody seems to forget about but sometimes it does save a drawing. Feel free to add details and more shading if you want to have dramatic light and just the feel for the piece. This part is up to you to decide when when and what you would want to do with, with it and how far you want to take it. Remember to not go too far off from the original sketch and the colors because you it will look messy. I personally when doing things for practice and for my own don't necessarily finish the drawing still it is spotless and look and it looks professional. Remember this process from start to finish is extremely long and hard and doesn't just take 30 minutes to complete and the quickest you can get to a semi-finished result is after a few hours of and that's usually just polishing off some details, uh, having the right light, having everything in place. That's a few, it will take a few hours to have it good looking. Um, but don't let that scare you because at the end of it, no matter how good the end is, you are doing it for yourself, especially if you're doing it for practice and especially if you're just starting off doing concept art. It's just for the fun of it. You are just doing it for yourself to practice and don't forget to save your progress. Project. That's the most essential part. As to recap, we have gotten from an empty piece of paper to a thumbnail of a place that doesn't exist, to a digital version finished with colors, light and a story behind the newborn piece. And you have learned, I hope, a few useful shortcuts to use in Photoshop. Go play around with the layer settings. There are no specific rules of how you want to use it and it's just the matter of preference. Um, so I cannot tell you what to use in terms of the layer settings. So just play around. Photoshop is an enormous program where you can get lost very easily and to get to know it will take years. So don't feel like you know the program, you, we, you just, we just barely scratch the surface of it for just the easiest part to make something to look complete or something that will satisfy you and satisfy the learning process. There is always more to learn. So if you're interested in Photoshop and just generally their settings and stuff, go see another tutorials about Photoshop. Uh, remember that even if your project wasn't finished to the extent that you want it, don't be disappointed, leave it, come to it later if you want. I personally prefer working on and coming up with the ideas and I'm not so much focusing on the finished products um, all the time. For some people, it's about the journey and the new things that you can learn while you're doing it. So especially this one, try practicing concept art, practicing doing just dig digital illustration, It's especially if it's like for yourself and you're doing it as a hobby for example. Just 
play around with settings you will find something that works for you because for every single person it's different and I can give you the shortcuts and tips advice on how to operate Photoshop and give you ideas on how you can start the projects and the very minimum you'd need to to do to have a finished piece but it is always up to you and up to a person to decide on the final results and what they would want to see I hope that this lesson had brought you some ideas shown you ways you can start a project give you more knowledge about Photoshop and I hope you have found it useful so feel free to share what you have made thank you very much mm -hmm.